Ok, vous êtes, tout le monde est prêt on va, on va ouvrir la séance et on va commencer. Ok. Super. Ok. Bonjour à tous et euh, bienvenue à ce webinaire. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar organized by the IEA. My name is Rita Madera, and I'm, I'm very happy to welcome you here today. We have a very interesting program this afternoon about awareness raising on energy efficiency. I'm going to be giving the floor first to the head of division, Dr. Brian Motherway, here at the IA. Thank you, Rita. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brian Motherway. I'm in charge of uh, energy efficiency here at uh, the IA. We are going to be talking about uh, the issues linked to awareness raising in Africa to ensure a fair transition in Africa. We have a new report which reminds us of the importance of energy for health and how important it is to align public policies in the energy area with other public policies, especially social, uh, social economic policies. Demand for energy in Africa is going to increase significantly. Economic growth, demographic growth, urbanization, development of transport and climate change, all of that's gonna drive that greater demand. And about 80% of buildings that will exist in Africa in 2050 don't even exist today. We will be talking about how we can um, take into account all of these uh, aspects. The International Energy Agency considers energy efficiency as being the first fuel for energy transition. It is naturally a key response to take into account climate change. And it will be a catalyst to facilitate uh, universal access to energy in Africa. Undoubtedly, our, we need to change behaviors and uh, usages. But ever since uh, the beginning of the energy crisis last year, at least 10 European governments have launched campaigns to raise aware awareness, awareness of uh, consumers in particular on how they can reduce their energy consumption. Awareness campaigns give consumers the, the means to reduce their own energy consumption and the opportunity to benefit from lower energy bills. It is also a way for them to uh, fulfill their role as citizens and fight climate change. Our topic today is uh, energy efficiency in Western Africa. And I'd like to thank all of the participants to this panel for having accepted to share with us their experience. It's very important for us to be able to count on Africa's outlook and perspectives, and your contributions are essential. And my, co my uh, colleague, Matthew Prin will uh, say a few words about this. I wish you a very fruitful discussion today, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Brian. 
What you're saying is uh, very uh, important for uh, the the topic we want to discuss today. If we want a fair transition, we need to uh, take into account all of these factors. We're not going to give the floor to the next uh, presenter, Mathieu Crin. Thank you, Rita. I'm going to be tell you, telling you a little bit more about the program on uh, people-centered uh, energy transition. What it means is uh, tra uh, energy transition that focuses on people, that is human-centered, as we said, without which we can't hope to uh, achieve our objectives. We and we won't be achieving the SDGs either unless we take into account trans energy transition. We have to factor in the impact of uh, the transition on global population. And what we're doing here is to make sure that clean energy policies are developed, but that they are accepted by the public, by uh, consumers. This would be, uh, this would be very counterproductive. It would be very counterproductive if they weren't. This is why Dr. Fatih Bourol, our director, executive uh, director, has uh, organized a commission on the energy transition under the patronage of uh, the ambassador from Denmark. It is chaired by uh, the Danish prime minister. And this commission brought together 30 members between ministers and uh, uh, policy uh, decision makers, uh, representatives of civil society, representatives of uh, faith-based organizations, representatives of the private sector. The purpose of the commission is to organize meetings and to produce 12 recommendations to for decision makers and governments to help them answer this question. How can we develop energy uh, policies that are more inclusive and fair? All of these recommendations are now available. They're on our website. The recommendations are all based on best practices and on the results uh, reported by uh, participating countries. And they are articulated around four themes, which are very important. I want to mention them now because it also helps us articulate our own work here at the agency on the energy transition. The first theme we're working on is decent jobs and employee protection. According to the agency, 70 million people work in the energy sector today. This represents about 2% of uh, global jobs. And this is, and the transition is a huge opportunity in terms of jobs. It could represent 34 million jobs by 2050. That said, this the the, the risk is that there'll be a certain number of disruptions, and that uh, current jobs and future jobs don't won't necessarily require the same skills. So the purpose of our effort is to develop the tools we need, uh, the, don't, the data governments need and decision makers need to understand the type of jobs, the type of skills needed to respond to the needs of this new uh, economy and what type of investments you need to be funded in education and training in particular. So there's a, there are a number of reports which are here on the screen and that are available on the site. We have also created the IEA Clean Energy Labor Council, which uh, brings together trade unions uh, throughout the world and with whom we are working on these issues together. The second theme that is covered by the research program is that of social development and social and economic development. 70 million people today don't have access to the grid today. Uh, 2.5 uh, million people uh, use uh, toxic and uh, fossil fuels that are bad for their health. What we want to do now is to analyze existing practices and see how we can align our public policies for 
energy efficiency and align them with other uh, social development objectives, particularly in the poorest regions, with, in order to promote uh, clean cooking uh, methods and access to, ener to electricity, for example. You have here a, a, a number of, re of reports that are available, like the one on clean cooking access for all. The third theme is equality, social inclusion, and equity. This, the transition, the energy transition is an opportunity to respond to uh, needs in our societies. Uh, and as part of our research program, we've been working on redistributive aspects of clean energy. We want to understand if uh, the parameters uh, are likely to have a disproportionate impact on some parts of the population. See if uh, subsidies to renovate the homes, for example, will be accessible to the poorest household, or if it will have a disproportionate impact on the most vulnerable consumers. A number of uh, events have been organized. They're available online. And a report is due to be published next year on the distributive effects of the energy transition. At uh, the IEA, we are also working on gender equality or equality be between men and women specifically. And the last theme that we're uh, exploring is the active participation of individuals. Under this theme, what we're analyzing are the ways of involving uh, people, uh, individuals via communication, via uh, best practices, uh, uh, citizen uh, organizations or conventions, and to see how we can develop effective policies. And this webinar is part of uh, the process, how to raise awareness on energy efficiency for Africa. It's particularly important for us to have your points of view, your perspectives on these issues. So thank you once again for attending. We hope the panelists and uh, the people uh, watching our webinar today will continue working with us on this if you have suggestions please don't hesitate to contact us. You will have all the information you need on the whole process on this whole initiative. And I'll be uh, giving you my contact information via the chat. And back to our chair. Thank you very much. I hope all of this was clear. The agency is very active on these issues. And today, we are focusing on theme four, part, active participation of individuals. We're going to be discussing awareness raising campaigns and how we can best uh, uh, influence uh, changes in behavior on the part of individuals in order to foster uh, energy efficiency. This is particularly important for Africa, where uh, uh, access uh, is enjoyed to the grid is uh, enjoyed only by about 57% of the population. That said, we're most interested in hearing what our panel has to say today. I'm going to give the floor to our panel uh, presenters. Today, we're talking about Western Africa. Our seminar is in French. We have four speakers from Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso, Senegal, and Togo. And I'm very happy to introduce this panel. First, Mr. Adam Rafi, uh, under director of uh, the uh, the Directorate General of F Energy Efficiency, as, which is part of the Ministry of Mines and Energy. We have Nathie Satou, who is in charge of uh, uh, follow-up and uh, uh, 
development of uh, awareness raising actions. We have uh, the director of uh, energy, energy efficiency from Dakar, and we have the director from the in charge of um, energy efficiency at the Ministry of Mines in Togo. Thank you for participating in our uh, participating in our webinar and contributing your experience. By way of introduction, I will give the floor to Mr. Assier. He's going to be telling us about what uh, Côte d'Ivoire is doing by way of uh, awareness raising. Mr. Assier, you have the floor. Hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to be presenting this part of the meeting. I am the Associate Director of the Directorate of Energy of the Ministry of Mines, Oil and Energy. Uh, this will be our, uh, our presentation. We will skip over the history and background, unintelligible for the interpreter. A quick recap of the history, which we will skip over. And let's talk about the Bureau of Energy Savings. Unintelligible for the interpreter. Please go back. Thank you. So a brief history. In the 80s, we experienced a significant economic crisis, which prompted new uh, usage behaviors. We experienced a drought, which uh, dried up our source of hydroelectricity. And so the government decided to turn to unintelligible and create the, abuse, the Bureau of Energy Savings. So this bureau sought to save power by optimizing the power which was used and using condensating batteries to optimize use. We performed energy audits in 34 different uh, production sites in the industrial sector and of 26 sites in the tertiary sector. And we also did energy audits of uh, homes and households. 10,000 households underwent this uh, audit. Organizational framework, we adopted a decree and the minister's immediate office adopted the decree. And now we have a, a directorate for energy management with a under directorate for public awareness. And so this is the subdirectorate that is responsible for awareness raising campaigns. And its goal is to develop and implement public awareness campaigns. In 2021, along with the European Union, we produced a document, uh, a strategic document on uh, public awareness, communication, and training on energy efficiency and renewable energy. It, base, it bases 
it base basically underpins all of our activities in this uh, field. It uh, sets out the target groups and specific uh, goals for each target group. It also has a public awareness, a communication uh, strategy that is uh, tailored to each one of these target groups. So what are these target groups? The general public, civil society organizations, public uh, decision makers, private decision makers, representatives of the energy, industrial, transportation sectors, etc. And each one, each one of these groups has a tailored uh, communication campaign that uh, targets it. So what are some of the activities we've already undertaken? Well, uh, regarding uh, professionals, so we organize some workshops on uh, the uh, energy labeling of uh, home devices, energy efficiency measures for uh, buildings, and uh, periodical energy audits. Now, with regards to the public at large, we have uh, undertaken several public awareness campaigns in the major cities of Côte d'Ivoire. And this was done uh, through, for example, uh, shows on local radios in which we spoke about this uh, activity and in which we provided advice on, uh, mod on uh, changing behaviors in order to save power. And we also undertook uh, some visits in uh, major cities. So this would have been uh, this would have these uh, workshops would have been organized in public places, and we distributed uh, all sorts of swag in order to uh, raise awareness on uh, these um, power uh, savings. It was very interactive. We also met with uh, major hotels in ma the major cities, and we did the same thing with them. We explained uh, with, to them how they could save power. We gave them uh, leaflets. We had conversations, and they were very happy with this activity. Still targeting the uh, public at large, we uh, developed some uh, billboard advertising along the road. And they, it concerned three major uh, types of equipment, so thermostats, uh, lamps, and air conditioners. And we explained how to buy, how to choose such equipment, how to properly install it, how to properly use it, how to properly maintain it in order to save power. And uh, we also developed some uh, TV ads. And we'll show you one of these ads uh, in just a few moments. We also have uh, other ads uh, underway. We're going to uh, do radio advertising as well as uh, uh, activities in uh, shopping centers and in schools. And here is the video, which will not be interpreted. Thank you very much for this very interesting presentation. We'll watch this ad, which will not be interpreted. There is no sound. Uh, we heard we heard it we heard it in the room oh, okay well i didn't hear it but i'm glad you did okay we'll play it again because apparently it wasn't uh, audible for uh, remote uh, attendees
Les enfants, ils m'ont tellement fatigué avec ça que j'ai dit. Attends, je vais prendre ça pour placer dans mes magasins. Et là, j'ai remarqué que ma facture d'électricité venait moins chère. C'est normal, les ampoules LED consomment 10 fois moins d'électricité que les ampoules jaunes. Et puis, comment on peut s'appeler LED et être joli comme ça? Petit geste, grande économie. Ceci est une campagne du ministère des Mines, du Pétrole et de l'Énergie. Ok, merci beaucoup. Merci. Thank you very much. That was that. Thank you very much. That was great. I hope that everybody got the sound. And I'll take advantage of the opportunity to ask you one small question before moving on. So we all saw this spot, which was very engaging. Uh, um, the, the, pour, pour ça. Uh, and congratulations on this uh, publicity spot. So what do you think is the role of uh, humor in public awareness raising? You spoke about uh, targeted uh, ads. Uh, how did you differentiate or tailor your strategy to different uh, uh, populations? Yes, we've always uh, used humor. In fact, uh, Côte d'Ivoire is very strong on humor. We have uh, satire on TV. Um, and so we just uh, leveraged this uh, culture of humor to uh, uh, serve our purposes. Now, as for the different uh, target audiences, we targeted, for example, the industrial sector. And we and uh, our campaign that targeting the industrial sector was based on audits, energy audits. And so we encouraged uh, major uh, industries and companies uh, to undergo an energy audit to make them more competitive. And now as for the general public, well, then we use billboards and um, we uh, spoke to them about uh, uh, home appliances, which ones to buy, how to buy them, how to use them. Now, as for the uh, hotel industry, for example, like uh, we had uh, in-person meetings and we encouraged them to also undergo uh, energy audits and uh, we gave them tips and tricks to change their uh, usage habits. Great, that was very interesting, thank you. And now we'll move on to another country of the same region, Togo. Dr. Chapo. Mm, Dr. Chapo, Togo is currently developing public awareness campaigns and strategies. And I'd like to know what kinds of opportunities you see to enhance energy efficiency in Togo. What phase are you at and what are the major challenges that you are facing? You have the floor. Thank you very much and thank you for allowing me to take part in this discussion. And thank you, in fact, for organizing this uh, meeting to enable us to share our experience with uh, other countries. As for opportunities, That question is already answered. We know that energy efficiency is the main fuel for an energy transition. And we know that the wasted energy is what will make all the difference. But we are facing various challenges. But in order to achieve energy efficiency, we must uh, leverage uh, in political engagement, political commitment, because uh, our uh, policies must be politically supported in, in order for them to bear fruit. And energy efficiency will just not work unless uh, it goes hand in hand with public awareness and education. We need to educate people in order for them to change their habits and use beneficial uh, habits. And we must uh, raise their awareness to the importance of uh, saving energy. Uh, justement, ces, uh, ces 
nous avons aussi au niveau des industries euh, une prise de conscience aussi à, à, à We also need to raise awareness among businesses and industry. We need to be able to demonstrate that energy savings increase uh, productivity significantly. Increase yield. I was talking about um, challenges earlier. What's important also is the regulatory framework. As regards Togo, we have very little by way of uh, regulatory framework. It's not sufficient. So we're currently uh, examining what can be done to regulate the sector by focusing mainly on saving, energy savings, and energy efficiency. We're also uh, considering a national program for energy efficiency. And one of the big issues is funding because all of these initiatives require financing. Um, we need to get citizens to invest more so that everyone can win considerably. Now, about initiatives, a number have been taken recently. There's the regulatory framework that I just mentioned. And by the end of the year, um, the whole um, regulatory framework will have been updated in order to focus it on energy efficiency. The government is increasingly aware of the situation and a program has been set up in the last seven years in order to optimize uh, electricity use. This is a multi-sectorial um, initiative run by the Ministry of Energy and which focuses on increasing the energy efficiency of public buildings. Uh, so electricity subscription uh, processes have been reviewed. We would like uh, uh, clients to be able to subscribe to the kind of uh, services they need. And um, perhaps also install uh, units to uh, allow individuals to recharge batteries and increase overall efficiency. Some performance criteria are linked to energy efficiency, and we already know how to measure their impact. And we can um, set objectives for energy uh, distributors, taking those criteria into account. One of our plans uh, concerns uh, urban lighting, public lighting. We've uh, adopted solar panel technologies and we're currently considering the installing some 50,000 uh, uh, lamps powered by uh, solar panels and that are also and others that are uh, plugged into the grid. Uh, 
Our countries suffer from an increase in terrorist activities, so it's very important to be able to light uh, certain urban areas in particular. Most of our lamps also need to be updated and the bulbs need to be uh, changed uh, to LED bulbs. Just changing the, the bulbs would be should, is likely to be enough to, to finance the purchase of uh, the other uh, lamps powered by panels. Other uh, directives are being um, implemented. We uh, also plan to uh, translate the material we're developing by way of uh, awareness raising uh, in the various languages. What's important is to raise the awareness of uh, uh, citizens, uh, how to use uh, heating appliances and not and to not leave the AC unit on all the time, to turn off uh, lamps when you're not in the room, you're not using them, and so forth. Another project uh, launched by the presidency is uh, uh, has been set up to promote the distribution of solar kits. And a another initiative uh, is uh, to distribute um, clean ovens. If we can reduce uh, consumption of uh, fossil fuel, uh, we will have made uh, considerable progress. This is what we're currently doing in Togo. And I hope that that uh, helps answer your question. Yes, you've mentioned, thank you very much for your presentation. You've uh, mentioned a number of uh, uh, very important aspects we'll come back to later. First, we're going to give the floor to Burkina Faso and to make sure that everything stays interactive. We'd like to uh, show a uh, an ad prepared by Burkina. So let's start with the ad. Thank you. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Uh... Faut que je filme ici, c'est nickel. Les vidéos qu'on suit le match ensemble. Ah, ça va Il est là Je viens de regarder le ballon, combien tu es venu pour sensibilisation. Et puis, 
je n'ai jamais vu ni entendu depuis si la consommation des courants. Et pourtant, Anéré fait la sensibilisation tous les jours, à la télé, à la radio, sur les réseaux sociaux, et même dans les entreprises et aussi dans les écoles. Hein? Anéré, c'est qui ce monsieur encore Anéré, c'est l'Agence nationale des énergies renouvelables et de l'efficacité énergétique. Elle sensibilise les ménages et les entreprises à la consommation rationnelle de l'électricité. Tu gagnerais bien à écouter ces conseils. Moins de gaspillage d'énergie et en plus, tu peux économiser ton argent Ah bon, mon conseiller J'ai compris, tu as parfaitement raison. Désormais, je ferai attention à ne plus gaspiller l'électricité qui est l'énergie précieuse de tous. Rachid Oui, papa. Voilà, bien. Va éteindre toutes les lumières. Oui, papa. Et désormais, c'est toi, monsieur, énergie de la maison. Oui, tu surveilles tout et tu éteins tous les appareils qui ne sont pas utilisés. Compris Merci mon bébé. Allez. Ne jamais laisser en marche tout appareil inutilisé. Ensemble, engageons-nous à être des acteurs de l'efficacité énergétique. Ceci est un message du ministère de l'Énergie. Alors, nous avons bien entendu euh, les conseils de l'ANERE. So, l'ANERE a des conseils très bons pour tous. So now we're going to give the floor to um, the representative from Burkina Faso who's going to tell us a little bit more about Anere. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share this with you. My presentation will focus on one initiative that we've uh, uh, taken recently. Would I have the first slide, please? Let's talk about the, the legal environment, then we'll talk about the organizational framework, and then we'll talk about the agency as well, as well as uh, some awareness raising actions, especially those taken in the last three years. Next slide, please. Like in most other countries, Burkina Faso is aware of uh, how important it is to save energy. This is why the National Agency for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency was created. A number of innovations are included in the law that created the agency, with the liberalization of production and distribution of uh, electrical power, uh, to, uh, auto production, and so forth. Uh, you have the full list. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, the organizational uh, framework is as follows. We are a, an agency that uh, reports back to the Ministry of Energy. And we're here to implement the public policies decided by the government. Just a few words about ANERE, which was created in 2016, and whose, its bylaws were created were published in the December 2016. And uh, it, uh, the main mission of the agency is to promote uh, and coordinate uh, actions to develop renewable energies and energy savings. We have five main missions and some secondary missions. Uh, awareness raising and communication is part of our remit. We also provide several services, quality control for equipment and installation of equipment energy audits and others. To come to today's subject, the 10 uh, heat wave actions. 
we've implemented a program in 2019. It lists 10 actions or habits people can adopt in times of heat waves in order to save power. The interpreter regrets the sound is fluctuating, cutting in and out, and the interpreter will in only interpret what she properly hears. So we call them heat wave actions. There are 10 of them, and they uh, run the gam gamut from public awareness to creating microclimates through at conferences promoting solar power equipment, training, among others. And each training uh, workshop has a energy efficiency component. So what are the wins from this uh, 10 heat wave action campaign? Well, between 2019 and 2020, we have undertaken energy audits which have allowed us to conclude that energy insufficiency can allow us uh, to realize uh, energy savings of 40 to 50 percent over four to five years. We've also adopted a decree about energy efficiency. We've translated into plain language for the general public. And auditors and major consumers of power now know they have a duty to implement energy efficiency measures. Unintelligible for the interpreter, the sound is cutting in and out. So I said we organized workshops, training, and conferences, and they always have an awareness uh, raising or a public awareness component. So we also went knocking on doors, organized activities in public places, organized activities for hotels and the uh, hospitality industry. And we've uh, educated consumers on a smart use of electricity. And we uh, encourage them to create uh, microclimates all around them, for example, by planting trees. 
de certaines structures et de certaines, certaines, euh, certains particuliers des plans chaque année. And this was supported by the by a plan to provide 18,125 saplings for free to those interested. We have also done an activity in the case of this same project of the canicule, which we call the responsible energy. In fact, it's we also have uh, an initiative in which we designate an energy champion, and this energy champion uh, is responsible for raising awareness among their colleagues and uh, monitoring energy use and explaining how to change consumption habits, energy use, to reduce energy use. Indeed, the culture is such that when a company pays for energy, you tend to be more wasteful. Companies who participated in this program say they have noticed a smarter use of energy and lower power bills. And of course, we work through the media, social media, to create awareness raising messages. There are little tips and tricks on ways to save electricity. We've developed about 30 messages giving tips and tricks on ways to reduce energy use. These messages um, are used on traditional media and social media. And uh, we used artists and uh, public personalities to get the message across. For example, we worked with a very well-known artist and with very well-known comedians. Among others, we also started a competition. With the prize, and we organized a renewable energy and energy efficiency week. And this is a yearly event. We also implemented an initiative targeting households. And under this initiative, we study three months worth of uh, energy uh, bills or of, of, of household power bills. And we help uh, households study their power bills to see how they can reduce them. For example, they see that their February power bill is always highest. And unintelligible. 
niveau du ministère, je n'ai pas mentionné dans la présentation, mais c'est des actions aussi qui méritent d'être soutenues. Il y a eu le projet 1 million de Sabine là, dans lequel on a offert à Another project targeting households called One Million Households. And it involved youth. And many of these youth were renewable energy technicians or energy retrofit technicians. And uh, we sh shared best practices with them. We also have another project called Solar Backup, under which we distributed the solar energy kits. Indeed, um, your average consumer isn't really familiar with solar power. And some 2,000 people have now followed our solar power uh, backup. A training program and have kids. In perspective, we have the initiative to create ambassadors of energy. We also created a, energy ambassadors. Uh, in schools, and in fact, uh, we targeted young ch children, the youngest children, and, and so that they could be uh, energy efficiency champions at school and at home. And we've also included an energy efficiency component in uh, primary school uh, curriculums. Il y a l'opérationnalisation de la directive de l'UMOA. Uh, and uh, we've also oper operationalized uh, the, the ministry's uh, directive on uh, labeling of uh, household appliances. La résumée, c'est un peu l'expérience de la NERI dans le cadre de la mise à l'œuvre des 10 actions canicules. Unintelligible. Thank you very much. You are obviously doing remarkable work in Burkina Faso with these very dif this differential tailored uh, public awareness campaign among different target uh, audiences. Now, time flies when you're having fun, and it's already uh, 3 p.m., so we'll quickly move on to Senegal to hear about its experience with energy efficiency. But before that, we will run an, an ad, because as we know, pictures speak louder than words, so we'll see an Ad, which will not be interpreted, and then we'll move on to Senegal. Economy d'énergie, Jemlen, Jemna, ça marche. Economy d'énergie, Jemlen, Jemna, ça marche. Economy d'énergie, Jemna, Jemlen, ça marche.
Frigobo. Mbanyo. Boki. Wa A-E-M-E. Nyon nyon ni. De agence pour l'économie et la maîtrise de l'énergie. Nyon nyon ni. Jok ayy khibar yu. Vous chargez le téléphone ma parek. Te branche le boubak. Il y a quand même vous chargez le. Wa yi qui y a quand même temi. De fois y dire le gaz. Tant que tu n'y a pas de temps. Ne peut pas dire que tu conserves le téléphone. Ou alors tu frigo. Mange y a que énergie. Et gaz. Ken de quoi d'énergie du jour. Kana khamon l'on y a que énergie le. Y a quand même énergie. Moi je suis sur notre économie. Madame, Madame Ndiaye, donc à vous la parole. Euh, on, Madame Ndiaye. On, on parle euh, Wolof, euh, donc peut-être que je vais commencer par là. That, uh, half of that, uh, that ad was in Wolof, and I, I think you want to say a few words about how important it is to adapt our messages to local languages. And say a few words about uh, the different campaigns AM uh, has uh, conducted and your successes and failures. Yes, I would like to first comment that one commercial that you mentioned, because we most we used uh, um, famous actors, either uh, famous singers or actors and so forth. We often use that approach because it's uh, it's important for our communication strategy we want the message to be uh, to, to be uh, conveyed and we use um, influential people we had uh, we also used a famous actor to uh, uh, to be our ambassador on energy savings in Senegal. I'm not going to talk much about um, context because we don't have a whole lot of time. But what's important in awareness raising is that we have uh, two types of uh, two forms of communication. Most all of our programs have a communication um, aspect, the, the whole communication program for each one. We adapt our communication in order to target changes in behavior and uh, to promote uh, energy savings. Our agency, which is uh, for uh, energy savings and um, energy control in Senegal, and which reports back to the uh, energy ministry, or rather the Ministry of Oil and Energy. Uh, the agency has a number of priority programs on to promote uh, uh, effective uh, methods, uh, particularly for lighting and uh, buildings. We also conduct uh, energy diagnosis actions. One, uh, our, one of our jobs is to um, maximize the efficiency of uh, the government's energy bill. And there are a number of other programs. For each program, there's a, a communication program and a, an effort to distribute uh, the information through, through communication and awareness raising. Some, uh, we, we also have uh, actions to uh, phase out uh, equipment that is no longer uh, considered uh, Effective. In addition to communication on our different programs, we have a national communication program, which we're also in charge of. Every year, we launch a campaign to accompany our actions throughout the year. Our, the targets of uh, this uh, communication are multiple. We have institutional uh, 
communication, communication for the public at large, and also digital communication. Let's take institutional communication first. What we try to do is communicate with uh, institutions, the government to begin with, which needs to be to set an example, but also private businesses. We want these players to disseminate this information as well, but also be on hand to uh, to monitor uh, practices. And since we're also in charge of reducing the government's uh, energy bill, this is also part of our mandate. Another thing we do is uh, promote good practices. For example, choosing the right uh, voltage for a light bulb or uh, setting the AC unit to the right uh, level. So institutional communication, targeting the government, targeting or government organizations, and um, targeting private enterprises on the challenges of energy, of uh, climate change, and the the need to save energy. What our teams do is uh, provide a diagnosis of uh, a building, for example, and provide uh, advice. The idea being to help companies implement a certain number of pilot measures in particular. We are there to improve the uh, energy uh, consumption of uh, public uh, buildings, but also um, the buildings in general, where which receive um, which receive the public, uh, hospitals, uh, uh, fire stations, schools, etc. Alongside the institutional communication activities, we have general public communication initiatives. What we do is we go see uh, households or small businesses to provide information, to have a discussion with them, on to see how they can improve their energy consumption. We work through uh, civil society organizations, uh, women's organizations, for example, and we have a, a program with the uh, education ministry to raise awareness in school children on the issues linked to climate change and energy savings. What we want is to encourage uh, children to disseminate these messages in their family and to be prepared for the future. We produce uh, pedagogical uh, guides that are designed for schools, teaching material, and so forth. What we also do is develop uh, uh, other uh, guides and information uh, tools what you have here on the screen, for example. You have a number of brochures that are available. And we also provide uh, communication kits. We we also organize uh, campaigns uh, with uh, the local population. We go, to, we go. We're present on markets. We organize um, 
buses, for example. And depending on our budget, we try and communicate uh, as close as possible to the population. So we have uh, information buses with uh, the AEM logo and with uh, our main brochures and, uh, and information um, programs. We also have um, billboards and especially in Dakar, but also in other major cities to promote communication further. And beyond the billboards, we have digital communication. We've developed mobile applications relating to some programs and regarding uh, regulatory uh, uh, regulatory conditions that are so applications that are available for small businesses to help them in uh, their activity. We produce flyers and other uh, communication tools. Uh, so I'll start uh, by uh, uh, commenting this, uh, what you're seeing on the screen. This is something we're trying to do throughout the country. What we've uh, realized is that when we have this uh, sort of communication in the field, often we find that the, the population is extremely interested in this sort of message. But it's hard to change behaviors because when you talk to them, they agree, but they tend to revert back to uh, previous practices and new practices are very hard to uh, just to uh, to impose in particularly in rural areas. So what we we've decided to do is to have um, continuous communication campaigns not just once in a while. We are going to set up regional and territorial uh, units, uh, offices, in order to uh, distribute our communication and our messages throughout Senegal. For the time being, we have 14 regions and 11 offices are already up and running. We would even like to be clo even closer to the uh, to the population by opening offices at the department level with information offices where uh, specific practices can be de demonstrated and fixed information points and contact points. Some can be mobile, others uh, are, are fixed. We uh, are also in charge of uh, local activities, and we're, we need to cover all of the departments. The idea being to help the local governments uh, communicate also on energy savings. So these offices receive people who come for all sorts of different regions, and we're on hand to explain and to communicate these messages on energy savings. Last but not least, I'll just say that we've signed a number of uh, agreements with the, the media. We have uh, we develop uh, programs which are broadcast and enable us to communicate on a broader level. This is the type of uh, program we develop. If you, if you could, these are some of the, the flyers and uh, brochures we develop. And another idea we've had is board games. We've, these are board games for, for children. 
on energy savings. So you can raise awareness of children using something that's a little bit more fun. And here you have technical guides that we publish uh, focusing on specific themes. Every year we develop a new theme, transportation, uh, you have uh, lighting, you have households and so forth. Every, uh, every year we develop a new guide with a specific uh, angle. So this is what our communication program is all about in Senegal. Thank you very much for giving us this presentation of all. I must say that I personally have had a chance to work and cooperate with Senegal, and I know firsthand the excellent quality of uh, your work. So congratulations. Now we are in a French webinar, but I will speak, I will use a Portuguese expression, which means to um, lock up with a golden key. And I think we've really finished with the golden key. I had planned another um, question, but I'm afraid that we're, we've uh, used up all our time. I would like to thank all the video speakers for their excellent uh, contribution. It was a very interesting and uh, useful uh, conversation. So on behalf of the International Energy Agency, thank you very much. And we will continue working together. And thank you to the public that took part in this webinar. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. And thank you to